This is Teacher Shandell with Zebra English. Welcome to online teaching. I am currently on my third contract with Zebra English and I love this company. I could not be any happier. I love that Zebra English listens to their teachers and they truly care about us. I also love that they provide us with new opportunities. I am so excited to be able to share some of my teaching tips with you. So today we are going to discuss two main topics. We are going to discuss ways to maintain engagement with your students as well as what to do with the parent that is answering or correcting for their child. So tip number one is to build relationships. I think that it is super important to be able to connect with our students and to build a report and build that relationship with them. One way that I like to build a report with my students is to ask personal questions. So go beyond those basic questions such as um, what is your favorite color, what is your favorite food, and ask more personalized questions like what are your hobbies, what are your interests, what do you like, what do you dislike, what makes you happy. I also love to ask questions about um, our students' families. So I might ask questions like, do you have any brothers? Do you have any sisters? Are you the oldest child, the youngest, the middle child? Or I also like to ask, does grandma and grandpa live with you? Or um, what do you like to do with your family on the weekend? I love to get to know my families. Also, a lot of our students have extracurricular activities, so um, I might ask, what did you do after school today? When we ask personal questions, our students and our families are going to realize, oh, our teacher really cares about me and they want to know more. Showing genuine interest is important, so bring those questions back into the class to show that you are listening to your student. So if your student enjoys painting or maybe they play a musical instrument, then ask questions related to that. So did you paint today? What did you paint? Did you learn a new song? Also, our students love to show us things, so ask your students to bring in their favorite toy. That way you can have a discussion about it. Another thing is Zebra English does not require secondary rewards other than the Zebra Coins, but you can always customize a reward. So if you have a student that loves Elsa or Ultraman, then you can always print out a picture and bring that back into the classroom to show um, that you're interested and also just to bring that into the classroom of something that they enjoy. Tip number two is to play games with your students. Playing games is a great way to get to know your students and to engage them throughout class. This is also a great way for your student to be able to take a quick mental break throughout class to be able to regain focus. There are a number of different ways that you can play games throughout class. Some of my favorite go-to games is tic-tac-toe. So I might play the regular version of tic-tac-toe or I might get out my whiteboard and write the vocabulary words from today's lesson or maybe even from a previous lesson and where I remember where they were struggling with some of those vocabulary words. That way we're able to pre-practice those. Also, you can play student versus teacher for some fun competition. Older students love this and it's also a lot of fun for the teacher as well. For my younger students, I like to play hide and seek, especially for those that have high energy. So it's a great way for them to be able to get up out of their seat. Um, for me as a teacher, I might hide underneath the desk, I might hide behind a chair, or maybe even off to my computer. And it's also a great way for your younger students to be able to practice counting. So I'll get them to count to 10 and then once they get to 10 then I will pop out and say hello or you found me or something fun like that. Simon Says is also another fun game that you can play. I like to play this whenever um, we have those lessons about body parts, so I might say something like, Simon says touch your shoulder, or Simon says touch your eye. So it's a great way for them to be able to continue to practice those and to be able to identify um, what their body parts are. I also enjoy drawing on my slides. Um, I usually say drawing on the slides at the end of class on that final goodbye slide. So if I have a girl that really likes Frozen, then I might turn her into Elsa and draw a crown on her head or draw some snowflakes and Olaf and sing Let It Go. Or maybe I might draw rainbow stars or hearts or animals. And sometimes I have students that tell me what they would like me to draw. And I will try drawing it and attempting it and sometimes it's very awful, but we get to laugh about it. I hope some of these are some fun ways that you might be able to incorporate games in your classroom. So tip number three is to use humor. It lessens anxiety, eases tension, and can lighten the mood. 
I love to joke around with my students and there are a number of different ways that you can use humor in the classroom. My favorite ways to use humor in the classroom are to make silly faces. So the younger students and even my older students love to make silly faces. Some of my classic silly faces might be to stick out your tongue or maybe me and my student might try to touch her nose with their tongue or maybe I might even cross my eyes. Students love it and it always usually gets them to laugh. Another great way is to use props in class. So maybe you might have some fun and silly headbands or maybe you might have some funny glasses that you might be able to throw on in class. That usually always kind of lessens the tension of the student. And a lot of times I have found that my students might even have their own silly headbands that they might throw on, especially my girls. Another great way to use humor in the classroom is to mimic your students. So say you have a student that is very disengaged and does not want to be in class that day. We all have those students. They are so tired and they get drained and they just don't want to be in class that day. And that's okay. We all have bad days. So a great way that I might mimic my student is say that they are reading very monotoned. And the sentence that they were reading might be, the bear is big. Um, so I might say something like, hmm, you sound like a robot today. The bear is big. <laughs> so that usually always gets them to realize, oh, this is what I sound like. And it usually makes them laugh and giggle. And sometimes we might even read the entire lesson monotoned. I have done that before. Another great way to use humor in the classroom is to exaggerate your voice. So emphasize words like, big or loud and then you can even lower your voice for words like small and quiet another great way is to make intentional mistakes or maybe you might make a real uh-oh because let's be honest we are all human and we all make mistakes a lot of times if i make a mistake in class i might say something like oh silly teacher and students love that and they usually always giggle and they also get to realize that you are human and it is okay if you make a mistake. Another reason why I like to make intentional mistakes in class is because it tests a student's listening ability. So in um, level three, I know that there is a lesson about toys and one of the words is water gun. So instead of reading the word water gun, I might say something like watermelon and a lot of times the students will laugh or there's even a lesson where they talk about sneakers. So instead of saying the word sneakers, I might say snacks. So it's always something that they can kind of catch on and realize, oh, the teacher was not supposed to use that word. That was wrong. Another great way is to ask crazy questions. So I might ask my student, do you like chocolate ice cream or fish ice cream? And usually they get a giggle out of that. So tip number four is to adjust your teaching style. We all teach differently. Some of us are more of a high energy teacher and others are more laid back. And that goes for the same for our students. So one way to help maintain engagement is to meet your student where they are at. So say you are more of a calm teacher and you have a high energy student that just cannot sit still, they're bouncing off the walls, they can't focus on the class, then maybe you might set a small goal for them. So maybe the goal is to complete two of the slides and then you get to get up and do a silly dance or sing a song. Sometimes us as teachers have to get out of our comfort zone in order to meet the student where they are at. That way they can better comprehend what they are learning. Also, if you are a high energy teacher and maybe you have more of a calm student, then maybe you might have to bring your energy level down in order to not overwhelm them. Another great way to adjust your teaching style is to use the help of the parent in class or even through feedback to better understand your student. So maybe you might ask the parent questions about what their child might like. That way you can bring it into class. Another great way to adjust your teaching style is to take workshops. You can learn a vast amount of information through those workshops and they are so helpful and they are right there in the resource section for you to be able to utilize. So tip number five is stay true to who you are. 
Every teacher is different and unique in their own way. We are always learning how to be a better teacher, whether that's through trial and error, taking workshops, learning through our families and our students, or even learning through other teachers. There is no right or wrong way to teach. Teach how you feel comfortable and always be you. I love when parents are involved in class. I think that parents can be a great resource and asset to us as teachers. I also believe that it helps with the engagement process throughout class. However, sometimes parents may use the incorrect English that causes the student to answer incorrectly, or maybe you have a parent that is speaking over their child, and it might cause a mood shift with our students. What I like to do is just praise this parent and say something like, good job, mom. Now let's allow Elsa to speak. So it allows the child to be able to still answer. I also believe that model learning is great for both students and parents as they can practice their skills together and it is a fun motivator. Well, that was all of my questions from Zebra English. It was an honor to be able to reflect back on all of my teaching and to be able to share some of my teaching tips with you. If you have any suggestions or tips and tricks, then leave them in the comments below. Thank you for your time, everyone. Goodbye!